Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. In this conversation I'm gonna be having with Andrew Locke, we actually um, recorded a little conversation today. It's all posted in two parts. This first part is about source generators because he posted a couple days ago asking if anybody's tried them out yet. And he, Andrew's always posting a ton of great content on his blog. I'll have a link if you aren't familiar with his blog already in the description. Um, but we talk about source generators, generators in this video, as well as I'll be posting another video in a couple days related to migrating to .NET Core. So we had kind of the two topics on hand. So this conversation with Andrew Locke regarding source generators. Yeah, so the thing with the source generator, uh, generator stuff that I, I thought was interesting i mean i get the concept and i get why people want them um, and there was a lot of rumblings i'd say even like months ago when the kind of the word was out that this was happening and yeah. then with the subsequent release like what do you think the where do you think this stems from like what do you l l maybe we'll back up even farther is like how do you see source generators being used and why would people even be caring right now so I mean, I think there has been a lot of talk about it for a long time. Um, from, from I think it was C sharp seven they were talking about them initially, yeah. and it, it mostly I think comes stems from people having to do repetitive stuff. I know to vote prof by property changed is one that comes up all the time. Um, I don't honestly. I don't. I'm not really sure how much they will be. I, I found a few sort of places. So the, the main place that I've um, found a use for it is um, doing the strongly typed IDs. Um, so I did, a, did some blog posts on that before where you they, it's a similar concept to what F Sharp has, where you have um, single case discriminated unions okay. for, for IDs, um, which gives you basically type safe GUIDs or whatever you're using. Um, so that can avoid just a whole class of bugs. The trouble is there's a lot of boilerplate to create that in C-sharp. So I've got this um, strongly typed ID NuGet package, which uses... So that uses Roslyn. The thing I don't quite understand with that, that does almost exactly the same thing as the code generators do. I'm not sure almost why it needs to be baked into the language, because this is something you can already do. Yeah. So I don't... Yeah, I, I don't actually know why it needs to be there. It's fine if it makes it easier as well, because it was really not slick trying to get that set up, and it relies on um, I can't remember his name, A A Arnett. Um, he has he had this basic package for doing for creating um, MS build hooks, okay, and using Rosin generation for that. So that that is really useful. It means I can just create a single class, stick an attribute on it. And then it generates a whole bunch of stuff in the background for me, which is always the same. It's just yeah, saves typing. Yeah, I guess the way I've been thinking about it is because um, you said that like it's. I feel like it's moving a lot of stuff that is done at runtime potentially at build time, right? Yeah, so that, yeah, the use case I. I think maybe the maybe the simplest for people to grasp why you would want to use this would be uh, like reflection. Yeah. Right, so yeah. instead of, I think of some, like I was just using in a project that I'm working on, um, I use Scrooter, and which is mm -hmm. basically like assembly scanning. Yep. Right, so, but you're doing that at runtime. You're doing all that assembly scanning at runtime to create all the registrations for DI. Yeah. Essentially, that could be moved to compile time, like build time, where you're generating all those individual registrations, and then you're not doing that necessarily all that assembly scanning at runtime. Yeah, I that that is a really interesting use case. I think that if you can do that, that would be brilliant. I do, and that's one of the examples they've given as well. Is that, yeah. So all MVC could. Because it that relies on generally like finding controllers, all that sort exactly. of thing. Exactly. Yeah. And if they can do that, that'd be brilliant. Having looked at the APIs, that seems completely intractable in <laughs> to me. Like that's because again, because you can already do this. I can't see anything it 
doesn't give you or anything new that it gives you over admittedly they're slightly esoteric nougat packages they're not easy to use necessarily but you can essentially you can already hook into Rosalind so you could already do a lot of this stuff I'm not convinced it gives you or I, I don't understand what it gives you extra to enable you to do that because I mean if you're, if you're going to do that generation so you're going to generate just take the MVC example you're going to find all the controllers there's a whole bunch of you, you essentially almost have to run the project in order to apply all the conventions apply all of the extra customization that you could you know so you've got an MVC options object which typically in configure services you might customize to change how names are generated and stuff you'd have to run all that at presumably at then build time yeah i don't know if that's possible i just don't yeah you, you, you have to sort of always build the entire project run it <laughs> to then i don't know maybe it is and it, it you know if you can get the if it can come out of the box that'd be brilliant if, if them building this makes it out of the box possible for the ASP.NET team or whatever to just have done it. Yeah. Because, I mean, the, the idea, right, is being is that you get all, basically, the Roslyn analyzers, APIs, and that's ultimately what you're using, correct? Yes. So, ultimately, uh, that's what you're using when you're creating a source generator? That's what you would yes. be using? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So, you, you get... Yeah, there's, essentially it's a visitor pattern, and it hands you the um, each class essentially, or yeah. whatever it is you're, you've hooked into listen to, and then you can choose to output extra files as required. So the other one related to that, which made me think of the like we were talking about the MVC stuff, is in the the comment I kept seeing pretty much everywhere, and I don't know if it mentioned it in the that blog post, which was um, like serialization. So again, it going back yeah. to um, reflection. It seems like anywhere reflection was used is a candidate, yeah. I guess. And I, and I think that one's easier. I think serialization is easier because you can essentially scope that just to one class. It's if if you want that one class to be serialized, it there's a very simple API you need to implement, like two string essentially, yeah, or or whatever it is, and you can. Is there's a one-to-one -one mapping? There's just every every class that has whatever attribute needs to be have this serialization, has this extra method that you, gets called, and you can I can see how you can generate that just from the class definition, for example. Yeah, it, it's where it's like it's like the DI example and replacing reflection seems. So I guess that, that does replace reflection, but I think guess it's the app level stuff that I, seems more difficult to me. Yeah. Like anything, the thing, the, the place where my mind immediately went, well, it's two places. One is how does this affect the average app developer that's not like outside of library framework authors, just your regular app developer, do they probably even care about this? Yeah. Like I'm trying I... to think of the use cases where they actually care about this or if it's something where they're going to then be the beneficiary of library and framework authors being able to use it. Yeah, I think it's most likely to be the latter because it seems yeah. like, you know, Newton Soft just JSON, probably not going to do this, but, you know, they could very easily ship and analyze that as part of Newton Soft just JSON, which if you decorate your classes with Newton Soft serialized or whatever, it automatically generates this at build time removes all of the issues of that of you know reflection overhead and yeah so i can i can see that but that to be honest you doing anything with the roslyn apis is a library author kind of thing to me yeah. you know, you're bog standard app developer it's just i don't know it, yeah, it's hard work <laughs> yeah because the second place that's immediately goes why i think that then is like anything, it, it seems like stuff gets used where it shouldn't get used. So then I'm trying to think, I've been trying to think of, and I mentioned it to you, I think, in when my comment was like, how is this going to get abused? Like, how are people going to use it in a way that they probably shouldn't be? Because I did see a few comments about, 
that same kind of notion too, like people being a little bit skeptical about how it's going to be used or, and then mainly I think, okay, if you have it in the hands of maybe where it should live potentially, like, I don't know all the use cases. I was just kind of throwing that out there with library authors and stuff, but then it's their kind of own issue. But then I think of like, if it's, if it starts getting in the hands of app developers that are putting it in weird places, it's, is it, it feels like a very, um, hidden. Yeah, it could, it could be very difficult to, to figure out what is going on. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I actually think that that's not going to be a huge issue because I can't see, um, I just can't see your average app developer using it. Yeah. You have to like, really go out of your way to get your head around the Roslyn APIs, which on the one hand, they're fine, but you sort of need a computer science degree to understand yeah. them and <laughs> figure out the difference between a sem- semantic model versus a syntactical model and all this sort of thing. I just can't see app developers essentially wasting their time on it. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I'm I'm sort of optimistic in that I think that lots of other people clever than me are going to make some really useful things. Yeah, that's what I'm interested in seeing. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I was looking at the last piece that they were talking about um, and how it relates to AOT. Yeah. And I'm not really sure I get the gist of it here. I think the thing with the so the AOT is pretty much what you're saying about reflection. Um, yeah, the, it it gives them a shortcut. If you okay, if you can't if you can't use reflection at runtime because you have to do everything AOT, then this goes around it because it is yeah. it's all generated ahead of time, it's just compiled. It's just normal, essentially outputs just standard C sharp files. Yeah, and they're built in. So, so did you try to get the Hello World working? Like their example, I, or dude? Yeah, I did finally get it working. Oh, did you? Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. There's, um, they're, they're missing an instruction, I think, in the. Um, oh, okay. Example, I've got. Uh, let me find this. It, it was uh, Khalid actually that fixed it. Um, oh, okay. The one piece I yeah. can't get over with this still is the like string stringify nature of the whole thing. Seems a bit a little bit weird to me. Yeah. I don't know how else you would do it. I have no clue. It just seems very odd. Like I don't know how you how you author this in any meaningful way. So Yeah. <laughs> So the, the package I've got at the moment, the strongly typed ID package, which does essentially the same thing, that uses just the Roslyn APIs directly um, and hooks into build. So when you build, it, it uses the same patterns. It's the same visitor pattern. So it sees a class, it sees the attribute on the class, and then it generates um, tender, generates a code file in the background. Um, that has to use all of the raw Roslyn APIs. That's not sort of so string based in that respect. Okay. And that's that's a nightmare because basically you have to write your C sharp class that you want it to generate in the end, and then you have to convert that into the Roslyn API syntax. Oh, okay. And there's 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 uh, a website that does that for you, thankfully, but it's like a thousand lines. So this is arguably code. easier. Yes. Okay. I think this is a, a lot easier. Okay. Um, you essentially just do string interpolation to plug yeah. in the names that you want, and that's. I think it's easier. Whether it's that has, you know, obvious performance impacts from having giant strings, but again, it's a build time, so presumably it's not yeah. a massive deal. If this gets used everywhere, I don't know, yeah. maybe that becomes a bigger deal. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I'm curious to where it goes, like what people do with it. Um... I don't know. I like. It seemed like there was a lot. I feel like there was more interest in this than. I can't remember the last thing I feel like I had this much interest in it. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. I don't know what the I last agree. thing would be that people were that like in, like excited about. And again, like not being a library author of any relevance, like it's, I'm just kind of like, oh, cool. Like <laughs> I, yeah. I don't really 
yeah, I don't really have much skin in the game to be concerned with it. Uh, so I'm curious of the things that I, all get benefit from that will use it. Yeah, I, I see this as similar sort of thing to the whole span of T where yeah. framework authors That's a good point, it. yeah. And it may, and and it gives benefits to everyone. It does give benefits to app users. You know, if your underlying framework is faster, everyone wins. But yeah, I I, I don't really use Spanity at all in my daily work, just because yeah. trying to is so. It, it makes things so much harder to understand. Yeah. Generally, that I just it's you know I'm not working with raw bytes. I'm not at that level, so yeah, it's fine. Um, I feel like this is going to be a similar thing. I feel like yeah. a lot of people are going to make some good stuff with it, and it'll be really beneficial things. But I can't really see myself writing anything more than yeah. this basic one. Yeah, there's a, been a few things that I thought of that may be relevant, but I still need to grok it a little bit more to know where it'd be applicable. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just I got to see some more examples of stuff that I exactly, like that I mentioned um related to reflection that would probably be beneficial but yeah whether i'll use it or not in real world apps yeah. i'm creating i i don't know well i guess so that'll be seen i don't know <laughs> yeah the, the the generation the reflection ones that's the most exciting stuff for me that does seem like it'd just be a straight win but i don't I yeah the other see how it's gonna work. the other thought i had and i hadn't reached out to anybody about this was it, have you ever used uh, Orleans at all? Yeah, good point. I, I haven't really. No, I haven't. No. But the but the idea there being is that <clears throat> what you have ultimately is there is code gen that happens there, and I'm yeah. curious of if this simplifies the whole matter for them or not. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because the way that your basically your actors work and the definition of what those things look like. Um, yeah, there's code gen behind the scene that happens for that. And I just know, I want to say months ago when I was last looking at whatever version we're at, three something, um, it's always that first build that's, I always kept having issues with cause it had to build and code gen and the first build kind of failed. And then subsequently you were good to go, <laughs> but yeah. it was, it was a little bit weird. And then having to need the right package, this goes back a little bit. So. That's the same type of thing. It's like, um, yeah, any type of like, I don't know if gRPC had this issue too or not. Uh, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. It might, yeah, I can't remember that. But, it might, but it's yeah, basically it generating a client for you, like in a yeah. way. But yeah. you're, yeah, I, I don't remember exactly. I think, I don't know if there's a global tool you run to generate the client. I can't remember how that works. So the gRPC one, you know, I can't remember actually. Yeah, yeah it's, it's been a while since I had a look at it. Um, but this this absolutely would. This is exactly the sort of thing that they are talking about would work with that. It can read in the the proto file and generate a client. It, yeah. it could totally do that. Whether the, the thing is though, they're already doing that. Yeah, so exactly. Whether this yeah. simplifies that or not, I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe maybe it doesn't. Either yeah. way, you're going to have to add an extra package. And so, as a consumer, I doesn't this doesn't give me any benefit essentially yeah. in that respect um yeah. if it's easy to write then great that makes sense um yeah if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more software architecture related videos